that the whole process of systematic reviewing and meta-analysis has, has actually profoundly changed uh, medical science. Before systematic reviews and meta-analysis, you had a traditional review where someone would actually take some articles and look at them, review them, comment on them, but you didn't know why those articles had been picked, uh, what the search strategy was, what the criteria were for validating the articles that had been selected, and in short, they were really subject to a huge amount of bias. Recent things that I've been interested in, and it's spun off from the evidence-based medicine paradigm, one is to follow what goes on in randomized trials in, in registering protocols. We, we know that um, there is a lot of what's called publication bias in the literature. Studies get done but are not published. Or what's called outcome bias. S studies who, who plan to study one outcome switch to another because perhaps it, that was statistically significant. And the only way to really observe this and examine it is if we have access to the study protocols. This does not yet exist for observational epidemiology that it's, it's is not happening as much as it should, and we've evidence for this, in the area of animal research. And in fact, there's a much more animal research published than there is human research, but it is not being systematically looked at. And this is leading to the human research not being valid and not leading to results because the animal research was very badly done. And in the few systematic reviews that we've looked at of animal research, we've seen evidence for very poor quality research. For example, uh, the uh, animal investigators are not blinded to whether the animal had the, had the drug or placebo. There are all kinds of issues in, in managing animals that in human research we take care of, we don't in the animal work. So most recently, uh, we've been looking at the problem of research waste. And it's, it's been estimated that at the over 200 billion, B, with a B, dollars spent on, re on research annually, 80 to 85 percent is wasted. If we could improve on, on our methodologies and on the questions we ask, and on the synthesis of research so that we know what actually does not need to be uh, asked again, then uh, we, could save, we could save an awful lot of money. This actually is a Yale story right here uh, from 1801. Dr. Perkins from Yale went to London and was using these pr called protractors to cure uh, gout, syphilis, rheumatism, he actually cured everything with it. Uh, these were metallic and he, he said it was due to the uh, electricity. And uh, an English doctor, Dr. Haygarth, this, this guy, uh, made some wooden tractors and painted them to look like metal and he went around doing the same um, uh, study and he found exactly the same results. But anyway, it's the first example of using a masked technique in a clinical trial that we've been able to able to find so